Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We have breaking news that you need to know right the freak now. Uh, things are not looking so great over there on the other side of the globe. And it could get worse for our markets. It can have financial implications for our markets and stocks next week may not like what I'm about to tell you. So we're going to get into it with this breaking news. We're going to talk about everything that's happening with AMC stock today. Go over a bunch of charts to put this market into perspective. And by the end of it, you're going to be a more well-rounded, more educated, more informed investor and or trader. On that note, if you guys would like to come trade with us live in real time, I send out all of my alerts. Link down below in the description of this video. So first things first, AMC stock just went red on the day, heading into the end of the day as this breaking news is really starting to hit the headlines and investors are starting to panic just a little bit. The Nasdaq is still up just a little bit heading into the end of the day. Really looking quite terrible right now. Let's be honest. Especially if this selling does get worse. Yeah, we're going to be in for a rough one. So the breaking news. Initial reports state that Israeli tanks have crossed the border fence into the northern Gaza Strip near the city of Beit Hanan, we're also getting news from, I mean, senior officials of the Israeli uh, military. Let's go ahead and uh, pull this one up. Senior Israeli officials are stating that, quote, tonight is the night and that the full scale, full scale invasion of the Gaza Strip will begin in the coming hours. Currently, if we take a look at what time it is over there in Israel and go ahead and refresh this, it is 9.58 p.m. So it's night night time. People are supposed to be sleep sleep. Well, it looks like you're getting a lot of bombarding right now. A bombardment that is taking place. And then probably coming early sunrise is when you actually get the incursion. Now, this is when the stop clock starts. This is when if you're going to see an escalation, it's probably going to happen Pretty quickly, I, I I would imagine. I don't think if Hezbollah or Iran is, is going to wait, um, it, it makes sense to wait all too long. If they were going to do something, they actually probably should have done something like weeks ago. So I'm not convinced that this will escalate into a larger situation unless there were to be like a lot of civilians caught in the crossfire. But this is news that markets are not taking lightly today. This follows last night's news that U.S. fighter jets struck two Iran um, munitions factories. So this is basically the picture of this facility. Two F-16 fighter jets uh, struck weapons and ammunition storage areas that were connected to the IRGC. Now, if you guys don't know what the IRGC is, if you guys missed the last video for whatever reason, it's the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. It was... Uh, established as a official branch of their military in May of 1979 in the aftermath of the Islamic Revolution. We have heard zero updates on this. We don't know if anyone was injured, anyone was killed. We haven't heard any statements from Iran. This was apparently done in eastern Syria because it's where a lot of the drones and a lot of the rockets are being stored that are kind of uh, being used to send attacks to U.S. troops in the region. So this is something that is very escalatory, very much not great for our markets. Considering this, this, this news now that this invasion situation could come here in the next couple of hours, yeah, that's really not putting the markets at ease today. Other things that are also happening, quite noticeable. Gold is up over 1%. It's up 1.09% today. Investors are fearful. Gold is breaking out. We've talked about this breakout of gold that was probably going to be coming. You were seeing a lot of bullish coiling here once you kind of based out at your resistance level. You're breaking above that. Gold could run much higher after this news. The dollar is flat on the day. You're not seeing a rush to safety in the dollar. 
oil is up about 1.69%, especially when this news broke. You've seen a one minute candle of about a half of 1% on oil, and then you started to get more headlines. It started to go up even higher. Now it's coming down a little bit as the headlines have somewhat subsided, but still almost a 2% rise in oil is nothing to sneeze at. Gold has went higher and just basically continued to go higher throughout the day today. Look at this chart on gold, guys. That is a lot of fear. That is a lot of fear money heading into gold, and that's something to pay very, very close attention to. Now, if you are taking a look at TLT, normally treasuries are seen as a safe haven asset. If you have fears out there, if Dookie is hitting the fan, the fan spinning, the fan just spins out the socket, you want to be in treasuries, okay? Well, not apparently according to investors today. You can see that TLT is down 0.58%. It's continuing to get sold off. And this is just not great because if, if we do get a crisis over in the Middle East, if this conflict does escalate, if there is more retaliation from the US or from Iran or Hezbollah or some of these other militia groups in the area, which I'm sure to some extent will happen, I don't know, you know, I'm not convinced it's going to become this huge regional war. That's a possibility. That would obviously be like 30 plus percent downside, I would imagine, for our markets. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that's going to happen, but just more uncertainty, more fears. Maybe Apple has bad earnings next week on Thursday, and it looks very clear that you could probably see a 10 plus percent down move in the broader markets. Apple's like 11% of the NASDAQ. If Apple moved down 10%, that would automatically cause an over 1% drop in the NASDAQ. So I do think more downside is coming from here. But if you do not see inve investors buying the bonds, if you see investors continuing to sell the bonds, even as you see fear assets rise, that is like your worst case scenario. That is literally your worst case scenario. Because if you get more economic you know, pressure on the economy, if you're getting more instability around the world, and investors don't buy the bonds and drive yields down lower, those economic effects for the US are going to be a whole lot worse. Imagine it like this. If if you've seen you know 15 or 10 or 5% of the world's oil supply basically get cut off through the Strait of Hormuz, something we've talked about a while, a major choke point for oil. If we were to see any kind of uh restriction of energy, that's going to have huge effects on the cost of a gallon of gas at the pump. If that's not offset by rates going down on the treasuries, again, because of, you know, typically you get investors buying bonds when there is fear out there, you're going to have a massive, massive problem on your hands. And that would actually make sense to why the Fed would actually need to cut rates at that moment in time. So that is pretty notable. Now, what is also notable is uh, the volatility index, the VIX, that is up 4.55% today. You have been going higher ever since about September 14th. You were trading at about 13 on the VIX, a little bit under that, 1282 to be specific. And now you're at $21.63. So you have seen quite an uptick in the volatility index, just showing there's a lot more investors buying puts now than actually buying calls. And if you take a look at the percentage of stocks above their 50-day moving average on the SPY, and you pull this out to a five-year chart, you're getting down here to your October low levels, only 15% of stocks above their 50-day moving average. Uh, back during October, you were sitting at about 10% of stock. So you are right down here at this level. Just for context, back here in July, almost 80% of stocks were above their 50-day moving average. So you have seen a massive 180, especially, again, in your small mid-cap stocks. They are just getting obliterated yet again today. And if we take a look at the broader indexes here, we take a look at uh, the Dow is down 1.26%, S&P is down 0.67%, NASDAQ is up 0.22%, the Russell 2000 is down 1.27%. So it really is a, a, a tale of you know two stories here. The big tech names are actually doing okay. Microsoft slightly in the green, Tesla slightly in the green, Meta is up 2.39%, Amazon is up 7%, Apple is up half percent. Um, 
and some other stocks are, are doing okay as well. If Amazon had bad earnings, today would have been egregiously red. It would have been terrible. So we'll see what happens here in the last couple of minutes to finalize this trading day. But you really need to be finalized with any of your trades that, that, that you have that you're holding into this weekend or holding into next week because if dookie does hit the fan and start spinning well it's going to happen more than likely over this weekend so that is something you definitely need to keep on your radar and again you have big earnings coming next week apple is going to be a huge factor for our markets and and could cause really that next big leg of downside now amc stock is back in the green today up three cents at $9.26 per share, up 0.33%. AMC stock has been trading sideways as the markets have been falling. AMC stock is showing a lot of resilience. As Jenny Yellen would say, AMC is sound and resilient. So I'm looking at this like, hey, 2024, we know there's going to be rate cuts to some degree or another. This crisis might actually speed up that process. Investors are looking at AMC saying, hey, if we get rate cuts, and the environment to raise capital or refinance or whatever gets better, AMC stock is only going to benefit from that, right? Odds are the movie theater business is not going to get worse from here. It's still in its recovery phase. You're not nearly, you know, topped out or anything like that. So there's, there's not much of a reason to be short on AMC. There's not much of a reason to go bearish on AMC as of right now. The risk reward looks very favorable for an upside move. And I think that's why AMC has risen from its lows of $7.05 to where it currently is of $9.25. You've, you've, you've completely done kind of this 180 here with AMC stock. You've went from super bearish now to actually super bullish. If you take a look at the option activity, as, as I've said, I day in, day out, I'm trying to find a stock that looks more bullish than AMC on a put-to-call ratio, and I cannot find one. AMC stock's put-to-call ratio is 0 0.72. This is down from the high of about 1.8 back here in July. Problem is now, now that the put-to-call ratio is lower, this court proceeding is over, the markets are just super bearish. So when that flip does happen, when investors do finally sell off big tech, flow money back into areas of the markets that are going to benefit from rates coming down lower, that is going to be an event you want to be long in AMC for. That's probably going to cause a huge rally in AMC, whether or not shorts cover, whether you know we go to 100 or 200 or higher, who knows? I couldn't tell you that right now, but I know in my opinion, there's a rally coming. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. This is my opinion, my opinion only. I could totally be wrong. I've been wrong for years now. We've all been wrong for years now. The stock's heavily manipulated. So take what I just said with a grain of salt. I am positioning my position in AMC as if there is a rally coming. I don't suggest you do it. If you want to do it, I don't care. You could do what you guys want to do. Contact financial advisor if you have any questions. If you are curious about anything that I just said, they'll probably tell you, yeah, don't do that. Right? Any good financial advisor would tell you don't do that. So uh, you got to be a little bit crazy uh, to uh, even watch some of these videos. Or, or maybe you just want to make, make a lot of money. That, that does sound reasonable too. Now taking a look at the option activity here today. We have one institutional trade for December 15th, a $9 call worth $60,000. $60,000. 60 uh $1,350. So not a whole lot of option activity, but again, the option activity we're seeing right now is very, very bullish. If we look at the short position here with AMC stock, you guys got to take these numbers with a big grain of salt. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a financial planner. I'm not technically a financial analyst, but I do think these numbers are BS. Okay. I think these numbers are actually a lot higher, but Ortex is giving us what Ortex gives us. We have a short score of 53, $122 million worth of short positions on AMC stock. Estimated short interest of free flow at 6.68%. Free flow out on loan at 8.25%. Shares out on loan 16.31 million. Days to cover 0 0.85. Cost to borrow 1.22. Utilization of 39.71. So not the craziest numbers, but uh, still, you know, okay, I would say. Cost of borrow max at 7.94%. And again, there's a lot of these numbers, these short positions, in my opinion, that are actually being hidden that we just cannot see because they're all going to be exposed towards the end of November. So we'll have to wait and see, guys. So uh, that is going to go ahead and do it for this video. Israeli prime minister advisor says, when this is over, Gaza will be very different. 
Uh, okay, so that's that's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. Again, if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, link down below in the description of this video. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.